Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and this high grass that you see surrounding me today is called broom sedge and hence the name it was good for making brooms. Now today we're going to make what's called a besom and a besom was a traditional style broom. Before brooms are made the way they are now, all sewn up and machine flattened and all those good things, they were called a besom. And we're going to make a besom today that's fairly short that can be used around the hearth or a hearth besom which would be something that you'd use around the hearth of your fireplace in your home, like in my log home where I have a stone hearth on my fireplace. You can also use this same material to make a really good pot scrubber for around camp and things like that, and we'll discuss that in this video as well. We'll get some of this harvested up and take it up to the overhang to work on it. Stay with me. Now, to make a broom, we want to get this stuff as low as we possibly can, take a long knife, like a corn knife or something, cut it off and then just continue to collect this stuff until you have about enough to fill your hand. That's how much you're going to want for a broom. If you're making something smaller like a pot scrubber, you won't need near as much because you're going to double this over. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so the materials for this broom are very simple. We need some type of binding or cordage. I've got some hemp right here. We could use bank line for that. Anything that we had available would be fine. And then we're going to need a handle, and I just cut a hardwood sapling here that's longer than I really need it to be, and we're going to put a point on the end of this handle in just a moment. Now, the other thing that we need is a toggling device, and they call this a broom frame. And what it was was we're going to use just a piece of rounded lumber here that's actually a fro handle, but it will work for our purpose. What they did was they had a spindle of sorts that was a, you know, close to two feet long. It would fit one foot here and one foot here. And it was a square piece of stock to begin with, and it would be laid down in the middle to almost become a spindling device. And you would wrap your line, your binding line, around that and stand on the flats. And that would keep your line from being in the ground, actually, because you had that space there. And you would stand on the flats and you would pull up on the broom as you're winding down so that you had a tensioning device there to hold the line tight as you were winding down the broom. We're just going to go ahead and use a round piece of wood for that because you could use any sapling you want to use for that in the woods or a piece of spare firewood or whatever the case may be. But if you are making besoms or brooms and you're making lots of them, you're going to want a broom frame to keep your line on. Like I said, we'll improvise that today. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our broom material, our broom sedge, which is here, and we're going to remember that we only want about as much as we can hold in our hand for a hearth broom. That's going to be more than enough. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wrap this stuff, and to do that, we're going to use that tensioning device. So I'm going to use this hemp cord and I'm just going to wrap it around this device. Now you would drill a hole in this if you were actually using a broom frame. All I'm going to do is put a timber hitch in this to hold it. And then I'm just going to wrap it on here. Just like this. And this doesn't have to be any kind of perfect. You just need to wrap it on here to hold tension while you're tying up the broom. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square this bundle up so that I can start wrapping it. So I'm just going to put it on the edge of this stump and cut it down so that I've got a good, fairly even edge to work with. Just like this. Okay, now I'm going to put my wrapping device here on the ground and tie a quick timber hitch in this, just like this, and come over the top of my broom material that I just cut off. tighten that down. And I'm dropping down four or five inches there, something like that. And that's where this 
device comes in because I'm going to roll that up to here and lean back a little bit and this is where I'm going to start wrapping down onto that device and I can lift my foot off of it a little bit and let some tension off of it and that's what I like about the round is that it can kind of spin underneath my feet And you want to pull that pretty tight. This grass is dead and dry, so it's probably not going to shrink any like it would if I harvested, harvested it during the summer. But I still want it to be pretty tight. Now, I'm going to wrap this two times, and I'm going to end this with a clove hitch, just like I started it with a timber hitch. So I'm going to have to cut this cord. And hold on to it while I do it here so that I can put a clove hitch knot in the end here remember that's just going in X fashion I gotta get these gloves off so I can do this manipulate this cordage a little better it's only about eight degrees right now out here so it's kind of chilly and then I want to go between the X there, just like this, and that will give me that clove hitch type knot. And I can dress that up and give it a good yank. If I left myself enough tag there to get a toggle around, I could even toggle that even tighter. Trying to get a toggle around that a couple of times and you ain't going to good. There we go. Just like that. Now usually what I do with these, if I'm trying to make this permanent, is I'll tie a stop knot in there right at the bottom. And I'll move that knot all the way down to where that clove hitch ends right there. So it can't slip out, just like that. And then I'll trim off any excess. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drop down about three inches and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so when we're done with that, we should have two really nice tight wraps right here. Okay? Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and make our handle for this broom. And we've got the length cut already that we're going to start with here, but we need to sharpen this into a point with our axe or our knife real quick. So I'll just do it with my knife since I got it sitting here. And I'm giving this thing a little bit of a taper on purpose because it's got to be driven into that broom head from the top. It doesn't have to be overly pointed, but I do want it nice and round and nice and tapered. Alright, so we've got our pointed stick and what we're going to do is we're going to place it as close to the middle of this as we can just like this and then we're going to pound it in just like this from the top holding on to the bundle pounding it down and our goal really is to get that thing down in here somewhere if we can get it there and you'll be able to tell you'll feel the swell and you'll know when it's in there that's pretty good now we've got that thing into here and now what we want to do is we want to start to trim this broom up a little bit. So we're going to first trim this area and then we'll trim our length. Now in all actuality a set of shears works the best for this process because now you're just going to come through here and cut this excess off. But you could baton it off of there with a knife if you wanted to, being careful.
or you could just leave it. It's not going to hurt anything, but if you're trying to dress the thing up and make it look decent, you want to cut that down to a square edge right there. Okay, now we need to decide how long we want this broom to be. And we can just lay it flat out like this and trim it. Just like that. That'll give us a nice square edge. Now we probably cut enough material off of that last besom to make a pot cleaner, but I went ahead and collected a little bit more material so I could get that heavy thick stuff up here at the top because that makes for great binding. So what we're going to do with this is we're actually going to fold this in half. So I'm going to take it and break it just like this and break it over just like this at the top okay, to double it up. And then I'm going to wrap it exactly like I did the first time. Starting again with that timber hitch. Trim everything up. Just like that. Okay, so now we're going to take this pot scrubber and we're going to cut it off up here at the front end first. Just like that. holding the stump there and then we'll come back here to the back out in here and do the same thing wrap that thing up a little bit now we got something that we can actually scrub our pots clean with at camp as well so we got a pot scrub right Folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me today for this quick traditional skill on how to make a besom or a broom. Not only is it going to come in handy around the homestead, but it can also come in handy around a permanent camp just to keep things swept up and cleaned up, wood shavings around the fire pit and things of that nature. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, affiliates, and friends, and I thank you so much for your views and your support. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.